Tuesday stats. Hope you guys are having a great day. Um, we're moving on to chapter one, section two, day two of the practice of statistics, uh, which is describing and comparing distributions. Um, so, so far we've learned like how to display quantitative data. We've talked about histograms and STEM, STEM plots and dot plots, um, and also how to display categorical data. Um, the video that we're talking about today um, only applies to quantitative data. Um, all of the things that we're talking about um, would not make sense if you were to apply it to a categorical data set. Um, so um, it's important to like be able to look at a set of data and I don't know, make some conclusions off of it. Um, and so it's also important to like understand the shape um, and how the distribution is set up. Um, so we're going to today, we're going to talk about um, shape of a distribution from dot plot to plot histogram. Um, we're going to look at what symmetry and skewedness means, um, modes, and comparing distributions. So um, anytime you get asked, like a test or <laughs> something, um, to describe a distribution, you need to remember four things. Your socks. Shape, outlier, center, and spread. Never forget your socks. Okay, so don't forget your socks. Um, we're going to go further in depth um, into what that actually means. Um, so I have a lot of pictures uh, to kind of sh essentially show you what all of these things mean. So we're going to start with shape because that is the first S in your socks. So shape has to do with two things. One is like how symmetric it is um, and how many modes it has. So um, if you have a distribution that's like generally approximately symmetric, so if you take a look at this one, like, okay, we're talking roughly symmetric. We're not talking exactly because most things in stats are not exact. Um, so when you're describing a distribution, you would want to say something like approximately symmetric um, instead of the distribution is symmetric because it's not. So we would say that this one's approximately symmetric, right? Because like it kind of like has a generally symmetric shape to it. Um, so this one's a histogram that's approximately symmetric. Um, this one is a stem and leaf plot. Um, and so you can actually describe the shape of a stem and leaf plot as well. Um, and basically you just take it and you flip it on its side, which I don't think I can do. Um, and you end up looking at the shape, um, you know, just kind of sideways. So, you know, generally still kind of just looking for general symmetry. Um, so we like it if stuff's symmetric, but we can figure out how to deal with it if it's skewed as well. A distribution is skewed if it has kind of um, like a chunk of the data on, on one side on you know, either the low numbers or the high numbers, and then it just kind of tapers off. Um, and so uh, a good way to remember it is that um, something that is skewed, the, the skewness is in the direction of the extreme values. So um, one way to remember it is you could think of, okay, which way would you ski down? This isn't the best example because, you know, if you're like an extreme sports person, you might ski down this direction instead. But typically it's it's usually pretty clear which direction um, the extreme values are um, with the data that we're dealing with. So kind of the which way would most normal people ski down? Um, is it skied to the left, which is like skewed to the left? That's a really not a very good joke, I know. Um, but this is a good way to like kind of just remember it just a little bit. Um, so the skewness is the direction of the outliers. Um, and the, the extreme values. So 
um, if if you have extreme values on the for the low numbers, it's skewed it's skewed to the left. Um, and if you have extreme values on the high numbers, it would be skewed to the right. Okay, so this histogram is skewed to the right because the extreme values are on the right hand side with the higher um, the higher values. So that one's skewed right. Um, it's maybe a little bit harder to see on, on a stem plot, but really not terribly. Um, again, you want to kind of look at, okay, here are the lower numbers, 6, 8. We don't even know what the key is, but we know that 6, 8 is lower than 11, 0. Um, and so you, you have the chunk, a chunk of your data um, on the right, on the lower number side, and your extreme values are on the higher number side. So this is also skewed to the right. And again, you could just like take this and flip it upside down, flip it on its side, um, and you'd get skewed to the right as well. Uniform distributions essentially have the same frequency of values um, across the board for all values of, um, of your, you know, whatever your explanatory variable is. So like in this one, you generally see that the the general shape is like, you know, all the way from one to five, you have generally the same number of observations. Um, so that would be a uniform distribution. Um, this one's a dot plot. That's a pretty close to a um, uniform distribution, just because again, you look at the general shape and you kind of have, you know, you maybe have like two spots here with like three, um, three points, um, but for the most part, it's like generally there's, there's data points for like every explanatory variable, kind of, like the same amount. Um, and then obviously this red one is perfectly, um, perfectly uniform, but again, unless you're talking about probabilities or, um, I don't know, fabricated events, um, you're not going to get anything that's like perfectly uniform. Also, in terms of the shape of the distribution, something else you might have to be, um, I mean, you might have to, you know, deal with is the number of modes. So recall that, that the mode of a distribution is the most commonly occurring number. Um, and so if you look, right, this one has one mode, right, it's like up at the top here, my you know, my distribution kind of sucks, but um, this one's bimodal. Um, and it's not about, so some people get really caught up on like the term that mode is the most commonly occurring value. Cause like, obviously in this case, it would be this value here, whatever this one is. Um, but we're looking at the general shape of the distribution. Um, and so we're, what we see here in, in this particular distribution is that you have two clumps of data. So maybe you're looking at like heights of teenagers um, that are older than 16. Maybe you have, um, you know, the, the females will be here and generally your males will be there. Um, and so you kind of have a separate average um, or separate median, a separate center for each group. Um, but the distribution clearly has two separate high points and two separate clusters. Um, and so, yeah, that's, you know, the difference between unimodal and bimodal. Um, you can also have a skewed uh, distribution like this one that's obviously this one's unimodal. Um, so, yeah. All right, next are our outliers, right? So we did shape, now we're doing outliers. Um, so this is just like a little, you know, little cartoon, like, hey, we've got a nice looking trend line here. I'd like to thank the entire team for contributing to the data, including Gerald for the outlier. Um, and so, you know, outliers are like the cheese stands alone values, right? The ones that like don't fit the rest of the pattern. Um, so like on a scatter plot, it might look something like this, right? The general trend of the data is here, and then somebody else is over here. 
Um, in a histogram, you know, it might look something like this where you have one value here and the rest of your values here. Um, gaps are good indications that there's probably an outlier. Um, in a video or two, we're going to talk about um, how to actually calculate outliers. Um, so there is a numerical way to check for them, but at this point, it's just going to be kind of visual. Um, you know, you see the clumping of the data and then the one that's all by itself. All right, moving on to C, which is the center of the data. Um, and this, there's a couple different ways to measure center of the data. Um, the two most common are the mean and the median. Um, mean is you add up all the values, divide by how many there are. Median is you find the exact middle value with half of the data above and half of the data below, below that value. Um, so in, in skewed data, um, all right, let's start with symmetric. So with some perfectly symmetric data, the mean and the median are smack dab in the middle and they are the same value. If it's perfectly symmetric, the mean and the median are going to be the same value. If you have, on the other hand, a skewed distribution, the median splits the data kind of in half. Well, it does split the data in half, so like it might be about there, right, where exactly 50% of the data is on the left and 50% of the data is on the right. I'm just kind of eyeballing it at this point. Um, and then the mean is actually the balancing point. Um, so if you were to like have a shape that looks like this, where would you put your finger in order for it to balance perfectly? Um, and if it's skewed, uh, that mean tends to be pulled towards the extreme values. So in this case, if this green line is the um, median, then the mean might be this value here. Um, so uh, mean gets pulled towards extreme values. If it's perfectly symmetric, the mean and the median are going to be the same thing. Um, and we're going to talk about like when it's appropriate to use the median versus the mean. Um, both of them are good measures of center, but some are better used in, like the median's better used in certain situations and the mean is better used in other situations. So uh, we're going to talk about that in the next video. Okay. And then for the last thing, which is spread, um, basically measures how spread out the data is. So if you see in the graphs here, this one has high spread. This is like median spread and this is low spread because the data is like either really spread out or it's like really smushed together. Um, so yeah, that's spread. Um, we have a couple different ways of measuring spread. Um, the two most common are standard deviation and I guess the three most common. Standard deviation, um, which we'll go over in one of the next couple of videos, and the interquartile range and the, and the range, um, which again we'll go over in the next couple of videos, but just you know, so that you're aware of them. Um, up and uh, until you learn those terms and how to calculate them, um, for now, you know, you can just kind of describe distributions of, as having high spread or low spread um, or moderate spread, I suppose. Okay, the last thing to touch on is how to compare distributions. You'll often be asked to compare distributions um, and things to remember when you're doing it, and then I'll show you the examples in a second, but one is use comparison words. Um, larger, smaller, in comparison to, um, use context. So if, the, if we're talking about birds and the bees, like talk about birds and bees. Um, three, use numbers directly from the graphs. Um, you have to use stats to back up your argument. Um, so here are two examples. Uh, this is a bad comparison. This is a good comparison. Note the comparison words I use here um, and what I don't use here. Um, and I just highlighted a few of those words. So.
Cool.